Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. So I'm introducing to the channel uh, the latest car. So it's not a Mini, as you can see. So <laughs> and you may not be able to work out what it is because of the front end damage. So it's a Subaru BRZ. So brought as a definitely as a project car. As you can see, there's plenty of work to do to get it back on the road. So we'll be covering that across the channel over the, the coming year, the rebuild process. So what we'll do today, introduce the car, walk you around the damage, what needs to be done, what's been done so far, because there's already some videos on the channel of me working on this car, so whether it's removing the rear spoiler, etc. I'll link below to the playlist that covers all the videos we've made so far on this car. And then all future videos that we do make will be going up onto the channel as well. So a bit of a background, so I've got some history with this car, well not this car specifically, but the Subaru BRZ. So for those of you that don't know, it's actually a um, joint uh, project between Subaru and Toyota. Um, and they built both the GT86 and the Subaru BRZ, exactly the same cars other than um, the front bumper headlights and some in interior trim pieces. Other than that, they're both pretty much the same car, same engine, same gearbox. Um, pretty much the same bodywork, as I say, other than the, the headlights and the front bumper. So I've actually owned two Toyota GT86s in the past, so I've got some pictures now of the first one. So the first one was a white 2012-2013 um, GT86, so I fitted some BBS wheels, T and suspension, uh, tweaked some of the looks on the car, but didn't do anything performance-wise really. Um, and just didn't get bored of the car as such, but it was much easier to get power out of a Mini F56, for example, than it was one of these. So I decided to chop that in and actually switch it for my grey F56 that's been featured on the channel in the past. So literally, this, to get up to 300 brake horsepower, needs a turbo kit, so that's five, six, seven grand, whichever, depending on which one you go for. Then if you go over 300 brake horsepower, you're starting to push the engine in terms of internals. So you've then got to forge the engine as well. So it's something gets a very expensive game to put power on these cars. Hence why I switched to the F56, which with a downpipe, intercooler, and an intake, exhaust, and remap, you're at 300 brake and a button of uh, torque. So the second GT86 I had was a burnt orange one. Beautiful car, came with lots of imported parts from Japan, so it had a model is the spoiler, lots of pairing parts, um, lots of bits in the engine bay, etc. And that car was really brought as a quick flip, so what I did was purchased it, returned it back to stock, sold all the aftermarket parts on, then sold the car as a whole, um, and made a few thousand pounds that went into the green R53 that's featured on the channel, and that helped buy that car, and or build that car, so the profit I made off that. So since then, I've always had a hankering to get into one, but I didn't want to spend the money in terms of a, a 15, 20,000 pound car for another one of these, whether it's the GT86 or the BRZ. So I've always had a search on eBay for the last four years that has looked for a crash damaged Subaru BRZ. And Subaru BRZs don't come up very often, so for those that don't know the history, there was an agreement when these first came out that Toyota could sell um, a, a higher proportion compared to BRZ, so they were really limited in terms of how many were actually sold in the UK. So there's not many on the roads. Makes it challenging to get some of the bits that I need for the front end, so I've had to go brand new with some of those, but we'll talk through that in the video later. So this car actually came up on eBay, flashed up on that search that I had, uh, and I wasn't actively looking for them other than that eBay search, um, but saw it, it was such a bargain and um, it piqued my interest so it was up at i think 4500 something like that um which is super cheap for one of these to get one in working condition because of it being a brz and um, for the same year you're looking at thirteen thousand pound to get a facelift version you're looking at 16 17 18 thousand so for getting this for anywhere near four thousand would have been an absolute bargain so i spoke to the guys over at turbo monkeys that were selling this got some videos off them in terms of the engine running, the car moving, a video walk around of the car which they sent me um, and it ticked all the boxes I wanted for a, a cheap project car. So the car was delivered to me, so a bit of history of the car itself, there's not a lot of service history or paperwork with the car, um, but one thing I do know is obviously it's been in a front end smash, so it's actually a Cat S car um, for structural damage, so we'll show you that when we get to the front. It's nothing major and for me this should hopefully be super cheap fix now 
I've decided to go a slightly different route, which has made it more expensive, but I could have got this on the road for maybe another thousand pound on top of the, or two thousand pound on top of what I paid for the car. But what I'm doing is actually putting a facelift front end on the car, so new headlights, the facelift BRZ front bumper. Um, they don't come up used, so I've had to purchase that brand new from Subaru. And obviously with the process that's going on at the moment, I'm still waiting on some of the front bits of the car, so the slam panel extra, etc. is delayed on its way from Subaru Japan, so waiting for that to turn up. So what we'll do now is actually walk you around the car, we'll go through the engine bay, interior, exterior, show you any damage. For me, it's really good with this car because the damage is literally from here backwards, so the engine itself is untouched, so that's brilliant news already. The front wings obviously are damaged, bonnet, no front bumper, slam panel, all damaged, but the engine itself was untouched, which is really good news. So we'll walk you through that front section first, then we'll go through the interior and the exterior. Okay, so let's cover the damage to the car itself. So I've actually already done some work to this. So basically this whole front section was uh, destroyed. No radiators left, no air con rad. Slam panel you can see is damaged here. Where the crash beam bolts to the car you can see is twisted. And this bit down here that's actually flexed away from the car and, and broken. That's why it was Cat S, because there's damage here to a part that is spot welded on. Now the good thing is, with the repair on this car, hopefully, now I know there's going to be little gremlins that come up along the way that I've missed, but the slam panel that goes from left to right holds the, uh, the radiators, etc., so, and replaces this damaged bit down the bottom. That's what's on its way from Japan, is actually delayed, but that is the, the, the biggest bit of damage to the front once we get that back on or the new bumper, so I've got a facing bumper coming for the car, that'll bolt to it. I've got V-Land headlights, so they've got black interiors and daylight running lights. They will actually bolt all to this with, with no issues, hopefully. So the plan is, once the parts are in, is to get the car over to a friend who will be able to make sure everything's straight and be able to weld this front section in, because one skill I don't have is actually being able to spot weld. So I've left all this damaged metal on here just so it's got something to pull out if any of these bits um, are damaged and they need to straighten them out. So you can see the airbox itself, this is a replacement one that I purchased just to get it moving for now. We will go for something aftermarket eventually. Um, but I've just fitted that so the car actually runs. We've, hold, we've already got in the garage a radiator core, uh, air con um, and everything to go on here. So pick that up as a bargain, super cheap second hand. Got brand new headlights, like I say, to go on the car. And all the little trims and everything really do add up when you're buying a new bumper because everything was gone, everything was smashed. We don't have all those little bits of trim that you would normally have if you were just swapping a bumper. So we've had to buy every single little bit of plastic. And just for the, the bumper alone, and that's come to over £700 in plastics and the bumper skin itself. Now you could fix this a lot cheaper by just putting pre-facelift bumper on off eBay second hand. They come up for 150 quid. But I really wanted to go with the facing front end and you just don't get those coming up used. So other than the damage to obviously the front end, the metal work, the engine itself, spotless, no concerns there. So the big elephant in the room is in terms of power on these. Everyone talks about how low power is and low torque. They're not that slow when you actually drive one. Something I always say to people is don't believe the hype in terms of press. Go and drive one and see what you think for yourself. Now, I'm obviously used to sort of higher powered cars than this. So this, I think, is about 200 brake horsepower from factory. So the plan will be to go forced induction, whether it's a supercharger or a turbocharger, I'm not sure yet. But I've got plenty of time with this. There's, there's barely any money into the car, so there's no... Okay, so in terms of this front corner, it looked like it took most of the impact in the crash. So what I've done, these are new brackets that are just bolted loosely in place. You can see they don't line up, so this front corner is going to have to be pulled over slightly. Now, if that doesn't work, you can actually buy this front corner here, this panel, separately, and I'll just get that replaced. So, see what the guys can do in terms of pulling um, the metal work out and getting everything lined up. So, when we look at the wheels themselves, they've actually got brand new tyres on, which was good. These obviously won't stay on long. I'll go for something aftermarket and a lot wider and grippier. Um, so these will be up for sale at some point, but at the moment they keep the chassis rolling while we work on the car. Now obviously there's a lot of damage to it, um, I've already 
replaced the bonnet because the bonnet was completely crumpled. It's a brand new wing that side and we've got a brand new wing this side but as you can see because of the damage here we're not able to bolt that wing on yet so when it goes over to check that the car's fully aligned in terms of the metalwork and the front end that will also be straightened out and then a new wing fitted here. And obviously there's a lot of damage um, to the car and the car's a pearl white colour. It's really difficult to actually match. So what I've decided to do is actually hold, have the whole car uh, resprayed, but actually do a colour change at the same time. So I'm not sure on the colour yet that I'm going with, but the whole car will go a completely different colour. So I'm not going to go a Subaru or Toyota colour. I'm going to go for something completely different, so it's unique like the R53 that I've got. Okay, so now to the back end. So the back end of the car is where we've done most of our work to start with. So you can see already I've fitted Veland um, facelift style rear lights. So really not a fan of the stock tower lights that come on the uh, pre-facelift BRZ and GT86. So decided to go for a facelift style to match the facelift front end that we're doing. The wing itself, again, not a fan of the pre-facelift one, so that's come off. And I've just covered the holes with some tape just so that we don't get any water ingress into the car while it's uh, waiting to be painted etc. So I'm not sure again, I think maybe a duct tail um, spoiler on the back of the car but we'll see in terms of that one. Okay so the car you can see has got a rear lip as well so I'm not sure whether I'm going to keep that yet, it's something I've thrown on the car just to see while it's sitting there again, see if I like it or not. And there's also some corner spats from uh, HD autos as well that I've thrown onto the car. Again, I think I'm probably going to go with SDI parts on the back end of the car. Okay, so over to the interior of the car now. So there weren't many options with these cars from factory. Um, one of the options this does have is the uh, heated half leather seats. So they're, they're Alcantara and leather with a red stitch. So they're really nice seats, really hug you um, compared to a lot of factory seats that you get in cars. So that was a really nice option. Uh, stereo, it was a bog standard uh, Subaru CD player when I picked up the car and that's one of the mods I've done to the interior so far. It's actually upgraded the head unit here. So I've put in a Pioneer head unit and there's actually a video on the channel on how to do that swap so I'll link it in the description down below so you can check out how to upgrade your stereo if you want to. Other than that, the interior on these is really simple, nothing fancy, no gadgets or anything, it's a real driver's car. So there'll be plenty of upgrades in here. I want to do a lot more Alcantara, get rid of this horrible silver dashboard, um, either a re-trimmed or an aftermarket steering wheel, probably. I think probably a re-trimmed steering wheel for now, um, just because I'm not planning currently to run a cage in here, so no harnesses, so I want to keep that airbag, because um, I'll be sticking with seat belts at the moment anyway. But it's got a nice black headliner, um, push start, uh, NG. But other than that, there's no real things to call out in here. Um, comfort levels obviously improved by the fact that this head unit, it's DAB radio, manages all your phone calls and has Apple CarPlay as well, so I can get all my music into the car. Probably will up upgrade the speakers in here at some point because they are really tiny little pants paper speakers. Um, so we'll do some sort of simple upgrade. So I'm not going to go for a full-on sub or anything like that, but just a, a nice simple upgrade. Um, with some sound deadening just to improve the sound quality in here. Other than that, the, at the moment the interior is real, really stock. Seats are like, so there's no current plans to change those. Again, that may happen in the future um, because I really do fancy a set of, uh, of bridge seats. But we'll see how we go again with the project and how far we go with it. Certainly these gators, the gear knob, need a little refresh so although the car's only done i think it's 40 000 miles on the clock so it hasn't done astronomical miles there is a little bit of wear and tear here so we might as well replace these while we're going along with some nice alcantara and maybe some carbon fiber parts on the interior as well just to jazz it up and make it feel a little bit more luxurious because i think they are very basic inside even down to the little clock here that's like feels like it's out of the 90s hatchback from japan so that it definitely needs some upgrades. Okay, so that was the introduction of the BRZ to the channel. So there'll be plenty of work going on, all the suspension and everything will be changed on the car, so there'll be plenty of how-to videos. And what I'll try and do every so often is a bit of a, a vlog style update, just like this one, just talking about the progress we've made on the car and any future plans or updates to the plans. If you found the video useful or entertaining, please hit that like button, it really helps uh, with the channel. 
and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button so you get updates and notifications if you hit that bell on future videos uh, the BRZ and the minis as well all the how-to videos that are going to come with this and obviously the, the vlog style ones that we're going to do in. so keep safe thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video Bit, and there's actually little holes on the bottom.